Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Uh, this is a chart of First Majestic Silver and the silver price overlaid. And I just wanted to bring you back to this chart because one thing that I pointed out when we initially started this rally in 2016, which you can see came from a very, very low price on that stock. Not the lowest price it's ever been, but 350, very low, considering it ran to 25. Now, I want you to compare and contrast that move with the move that we had back in here. And you can see the difference. The main difference being that the silver price had taken off and the stock price eventually caught up with it. And they just kind of came together up there at that when silver got near 50 and the stock price got near 25. So that is what you would consider a normal state of affairs. If you have a commodity that you're in the business of mining, all of a sudden take off in price, become more valuable, obviously the operation is going to be more profitable. You're expending the same amount of costs to get something that's going to sell for a lot more money. You're going to make a lot more profit and your company stock share is going to go up, all, things, all other things being equal. Now what happened the beginning of 2016 was that the price of First Majestic stock just absolutely exploded just right at the beginning of the year and you can see it ran from 350 all the way up to $25 without hardly even taking a break. The other thing is you can see that silver kind of topped out all the way back here at 20 bucks and didn't follow that price at all. If it, would have been the equivalent of what happened back in 2011. It would have gotten near 50 bucks. But you can see that as the price uh, was sky high there on the stock, that the silver price had turned down. Now, when that happened, I predicted that the price of the stock would catch up with silver. In other words, that it was a non-confirmation that silver was not confirming the move in that stock and therefore I concluded that it was a fake move in the stock. Basically it was an anticipation of the resumption of a bull market in silver that didn't happen. So now we're coming back to an inflection point here where the two seem to be coming close to meeting up again. Will we get another move to the upside or will they both crash down and try to take out new lows? It, it would be shocking to me if this stock returned all the way down to below three and a half, but anything's possible. My guess is they probably will bounce somewhere around the seven or eight line because it's just kind of the general trend very, very long term. You can see that they've corrected way above and quite a bit below in the past. My guess is that most likely that they'll come back to that average. So that's that kind of interesting chart. Next chart to look at here is, of course, the Bitcoin chart. You can see right there an even 1,000 print out of China on Bitcoin, $1,000 per Bitcoin. Now, members have asked me in the past, do I believe that Bitcoin is going to make new highs? Absolutely, I believe it. That's 8,000 exactly on the Chinese chart, and we're currently at 6,900 on the Bitfinex chart, you can see that's 1175 and we're at 977. But yes, I do believe that that old high is going to be taken out. Now, where will it run if and when we get that? Well, if the past is any uh, sort of indicator as what will happen in the future, then if that initial run up to that 1175, we're talking many multiples. Many multiples could be anywhere from $5,000 to $10,000 per Bitcoin. I just don't know. It could happen again. So we're going to watch and wait and see as we get up to that heavy resistance up there around 11, 11.75 on Bitcoin. So let's get to the main story and we're going to spend the rest of the night here on CalPERS. This was just a shocking story to me. This came out just a few hours ago. And what was so shocking to me is, well, there's a number of things. We'll just go through it as we read the story, and I'll explain to you why I find this so shocking. But uh, this is a kind of a picture of the crisis that's coming everywhere. I've mentioned so many times before, 
less and less people are pulling the cart, more and more people are riding in the cart. And by the way, this is a very expensive cart. You'll see when we get to a PDF of the actual breakdown of the numbers. And I'm just going to give you round figures on that. But let's read this story and kind of read between the lines here. There's a lot between the lines. And you can see the title, Why Calpers and Calsters Are Wise to Be Cautious. So right there, we're told that they're becoming more cautious. Well, that would be a good thing if that's what they're doing. But you'll see here, that's not at all what they're doing. And uh, It says, the CalPERS board voted last week to lower its forecast for investment returns and to keep a ban on tobacco investments. CalPERS, the nation's biggest public pension fund, must balance its financial needs with the burden it places on state and local governments. So it was prudent with its decision last week to lower its forecast profits on its investments, ready for this, from 7.5 to 7% per year. Yes, that's considered a good thing that they're still expecting a ridiculous 7% per year return on their investments. It is the first reduction in four years and is far more realistic. No, it's a little bit more realistic, but it's far too unrealistic. The move will require higher contributions from government agencies, school districts, and some public employees hired after January 2013, but it will be phased in over three years, so the full impact on government agencies will take eight years. By acting now, CalPERS is softening a possibly more painful blow later. The California Public Employees Retirement System has $303 billion in assets, but is still only 68% funded to pay benefits to its 1.8 million members. It has been paying out $5 billion more a year in benefits than it's receiving in contributions and investment returns, not a sustainable trend. With investment returns averaging 4.6% during the past decade. Yes, you read that right. They've averaged 4.6% for the past decade, but they just lowered for the first time in four years from 7 to 7, 7.5 to 7%. So how can that kind of disconnect go on that long? Well, it's government. That's how. But the board doesn't want to risk, now get this, bankrupting any local governments which wouldn't be good for anyone. Do you see that? They're admitting that they're close to killing the goose that lays the golden egg. They're close to admitting that their needs could potentially bankrupt the local governments. And the other big thing I want you to take from this is notice that they're not even considering cutting benefits to be an option. They consider bankrupting local governments an option before cutting member benefits. That is absolutely insane. That tells you all you need to know about the mentality of the people that are running these programs. They are considering destroying the government to be able to keep paying ridiculously unrealistic benefits to people on the government payroll. The decline in returns is so concerning that the staff even suggested ending a 16-year ban on tobacco investments. The CalPERS Investment Committee wisely decided for policy and financial reasons to keep the ban. The public health impact of tobacco hasn't changed, and it's not a sure thing that investing in big tobacco would be more profitable. CalPERS says that 62% of its income comes from investment profits. 62% comes from investment profits in a period of virtually zero interest rates. So what does that tell you? That tells you that 62% of CalPERS investment profits come from either the stock market or from junk bonds or overinflated real estate. That's the only way that 62% could come from investment profits. 25% from government agencies and 13% from retirees and employees. So they're only paying 13% of their own retirement. The rest, they expect the tab to be picked up by people, as we'll see in the PDF of the statistics, 
who make much less than they do and who don't retire as early as they do. To make up for lower investment returns, state government will have to ante up another $2 billion a year, half from the general fund. School districts will have to pay an additional $500 million a year. That's for every school district. I, I, I can't be for every. Uh, it's got to be all of the school districts together. California cities and counties are still telling their costs but they will be substantial for the city of Sacramento. It means another $6 million a year. $6 million in the city of Sacramento. California State Association of Counties says employer rates will increase by 2 to 5% to cover public safety workers and 1 to 3% for other workers. The board of the state's other large public pension fund, CalSTRS, is also wise to be cautious before before signing off on a 10-story, $181 million office tower that could open as soon as 2020 next to its existing 20-story headquarters in on the West Sacramento Riverfront. Yes, you read that correctly. They already have an existing 20-story <laughs> headquarters and they're building a new one for $181 million. Now you tell me how many people are employed in a 10-story building and they have to build a new one. What does CalSTRS do? Don't they just invest the money? Why would you possibly need that many employees to invest that money? There are some hedge funds on Wall Street that are run by an individual person, Paul Tudor Jones, and it has some employees, but uh, some of the overhead costs of those are 1% or something like that. But here's $181 million for an office tower. So you can see the scammers and the uh, early dippers and everybody is getting in there. They, they know the music's going to stop. They're going to loot that thing. And those types of behaviors get worse as you near the end. As everybody can see the end coming, they begin to try to get theirs before the end comes. That's what we saw in the uh, Dallas uh, Police and Fire Retirement Fund. You saw a run on those bulk, uh, those lump sum payouts as people started to doubt the solvency of the operation. Uh, here, uh, you've got the grifters who basically profit just like people who run charities or grifters and they profit from all the donated money. These grifters are profiting from the retirement, which is really just tax money taken from the taxpayers. And they're stealing that, of course, before the whole thing goes belly up by hiring their cronies to build, spend $181 million to build a new office tower that they don't need. Its staff says the fund will need to will need more offices in about three years and it could lease some of the space. But in June 2014, this California State Teachers Retirement System received a bailout from the legislature that is costing the state, school districts, and teachers billions a year in additional contributions. Even with the $193 billion in assets, it is only about 69% funded for its 868,000 members. Yeah, you read that right. That's another retirement system that has almost a million members. It's sticking with its 7.5% investment forecast for now. In November, the CalSTRS board agreed to spend $8 million on planning and design, but also directed its staff to look at other options. State controller Betty Yee, a CalSTRS board member, says it should see what its financial status is in a couple of years before making a final decision on such an expensive project. She's right. Both pension funds need to be as careful with their money as they're forcing their members to be. Well, but you see... They're not forcing their members to be careful with their money because they're not making their members pay more. There's a little tiny raises in there, but they're actually talking about bankrupting local governments. That just leaves me speechless. Now let's look at the facts at a glance. For just CalPERS, you can see here a total of 1.8 million members, and that's just this one retirement fund. The population in the state of California is roughly 40 million. So we're talking 5% of the population here works for CalPERS. It, it, or I mean, has their retirement in CalPERS. So they work for state, city, or what, whichever teaching employment position is covered. You can see state members, 
school members and local public agency members. That that makes up uh, 100% of CalPERS. So you can see here, you've got $2.62, uh, $2,600 a month. That's the average monthly service retirement. That's average. So there's a lot higher than that. There's a lot lower than that. But uh, that comes in at about 30 grand a year or so, roughly. So you multiply that out, do the math by the numbers, and they give you the numbers of current retirees, which is 611,000. That's a big number considering that there's only 1.8 million. That means one third are already retired and not contributing at all, even though the contributions, of course, are coming out of taxes, so those aren't contributions anyway but they're not even contributing that. So one third are uh, already retired. Now that number is only going to get much, much worse as the baby boomer uh, retirement boom goes into effect. So expect these numbers to possibly even flip. They're gonna get much worse. But if we multiply this number out by that number, we come to about $20 billion. So we're talking about $20 billion a year they have to pay out. Now, supposedly their assets are $300 billion. So that brings you closely to that 8% figure. But as you can see, I'm doubting a lot of that. I'm doubting that $300 billion figure. I don't know if that's really what their assets are worth. And uh, I'm doubting what their real expenditures are. I think by looking at the office building that Calsters is talking about, you can imagine the waste that's built in, into this. So if you think about the population of California being 40 million and you think about the $20 billion they have to raise, that means that for every man, woman, and child in the state of California, it's $500 a year just to pay this one retirement plan. Now, if you think about the number of taxpayers that actually pay taxes, I'm sorry, the number of citizens in California that actually pay taxes, what is that number? Maybe a third of the citizens? It could be even worse. I would venture to guess that if you add up all the people who are on welfare, all the people who don't qualify for any income tax, uh, their withholding comes back to them in the spring. Uh, if you're talking about uh, earned income tax credit, if you're talking about the state employees who basically don't pay taxes, it's just a big circle there. You might only have one quarter of the population. And if you do, that means it's $2,000 a year per taxpayer just to pay into this one retirement system. So this thing is unsustainable. Now, when the stock market turns down, and I can guarantee you that the stock market is the only thing that's holding this Ponzi scheme up, and they, the Fed is in a very difficult situation because what the Fed has to do is they have to raise interest rates, bring interest rates to some kind of normalized situation where, where pension funds like this can actually make a decent return, but at the same time, they have to prevent the cratering of this massive stock bubble, which has gone up since Obama was elected from 6,500 to 19,000, nearly 20,000. So it has tripled in the last eight years. If this is cut in half and 62% of their returns are from that, then obviously their returns are going to be absolutely decimated. And they're not going to be talking about bankrupting state and local governments. They're going to be talking about 30, 40, 50, 60 percent haircuts in retirement benefits for current retirees. And that is when the political bleep is going to hit the fan. And we'll talk to you next time.